Hey guys, it's Nick the Booksmith. Welcome back, welcome back. Today I would like to share some of my favorite past and present editions that I like to add to books to make them special or make them a little bit more useful, whether it's utilitarian or decorative. Some of these things can also be added to maybe a journal that you buy at the store and perhaps you want to customize it for yourself or for a gift, or you just wanna make it look like a book that you didn't buy from a store. <laughs> okay, let's get started. I'll use this one as an example. I like to add labels to the spine and also to the cover. This one has a label added, of course. It already has something written on it. It's very light, so you could write over it. But you could also add a label that you could write your own sentiment or your name or the date. You can use metal book labels, like cover labels. You could also just simply cut out a piece of cardstock like craft card to write your name or a date on that. But I think that is one very simple thing that can be done to add a lot of character, a lot of personality to a book. <sighs> Another thing that can be added to basically any book that you would want would be some sort of a frame on the cover. You could cut one out and build one as I have done here with this photo mat out of chipboard. Or you could buy a photo mat from a store, find one that's going to fit your book, and it could be repainted or spray painted, or you could decoupage it with book pages, whatever you wanted to do. And then what I like to do is attach it on three sides, and either I attach it on the left and the right and across the bottom, or more likely I attach it at the top and the bottom and then on the spine side. And then that way, one side is left open so that a photograph can be placed inside or a postcard, all kinds of things. And then that way it can be switched out. If you don't want to switch it out, you could just go ahead and seal it all the way in. You could also mount the photograph onto a piece of cardstock and perhaps add a page tab so that when it gets slipped inside, we'll make a little mock-up here. I'm not gonna glue that picture down. That's a picture of my grandmother and her little brother. So we're not gonna be gluing anything to that because it's the real deal. And if you attach like a little page tab to, onto that cardstock, then you have something to grab that and pull that out and then you can swap it out. You can buy those little photo corners to add to the cardstock so that you can slip it behind the corners. Or you could even cut little 45 degree angle slits to tuck the corners in underneath and then that will hold it to the card as well without gluing it down. But I think that's a nice addition and then that way it can be swapped out with all kinds of other things and then if it's, especially if it's going to be a gift for somebody, they could put in their own photograph as they see fit, or even a greeting card or something. That's one of my favorites. Speaking of page tabs, there is a plethora and a variety of different things that you can use for page tabs. Let's say you get a book and you wanna separate it into sections or X marks the spot, whatever. You can add page tabs to certain places that you want, either permanently with gluing some down, some little page tabs down, or you can use little metal clips that will stick out of the top of the book. These are some little tiny metal clips of a different sort and those slide right onto the edge of the pages as well, and then you'll be able to see them from the edge. You could go even really inexpensively and take some scrap paper, just any kind of scrap paper, and choose the places where you would like for them to be, and you could staple them here and there and everywhere. They could be stapled onto the side so that you can easily get to them. There's all kinds of things you could do. You could use different kinds of fabrics. You could use ribbon and cut little pieces 
and staple or glue those to the tops of your pages. This is a little piece of trim with some measurements on it. That would look kind of awesome sticking out the top or sticking out the side. They're kind of fun if you want to have those kind of all over the place. Whether they're utilitarian or just decorative, they're fun either way. And what about a closure? If you buy a book, you do have options. You can always use a piece of elastic that you could either sew or glue together and just stretch it around. As you are working on it, you can use just elastic to keep it closed. Another non-permanent option would just be a piece of ribbon to tie it closed just so that, I don't know, maybe you don't want stuff falling out, but easy, easy. But there are lots of different things that you can do, even little locks that you can buy that you can add onto little leather straps or something if you want to lock it closed. I will put some ideas, some videos that I have done in the past and there's there's probably a lot. We're talking dozens and dozens and dozens. So if any of these different ideas sound good to you and you want to look at some different examples of things that can be done either fairly easily or maybe not so easily, you can take a look through those videos and see if anything strikes your fancy. Another thing you can always do is add a bookmark. If you're making your own book, you can add one when you are binding in the pages into the hollow spine and you add that to the text block before you put on the headband and then it is glued to the back of the text block and then it comes down and it falls in between the pages. But if you bought a book or your book is already put together, you can also just make your own. This one is a stretch of torn velvet and then on either end, just some little charms to weight it down so that it stays in its spot. But bookmarks are fairly easy to put together out of fabric or paper, all kinds of things. And I think they always look nice and they keep your place. Going along this same idea, you could also make a raggedy. And raggedies are a creation I came up with, a, I don't know, a few years back. <laughs> and raggedies can be used as page markers, you can also add pockets onto them and they can hold photographs or ephemera memorabilia that you collect and it can be removed and put back as needed. And what's nice about a raggedy is that it can turn any journal into looking like a junk journal like that because it just gets tucked inside. It's built to look like there's pages and scraps of fabric and all kinds of things just hanging off of it. You can tuck in between the pages as many or as few as you would like and it will give your even your store-bought journal a very homemade pieced together scrap together look in a very short period of time. Again, videos down below that talk about raggedies, what they are, how I make them, that kind of thing. Another thing you can add would be on the inside would be like pockets. This is a scrap of six by six cardstock, and you can build a little pocket to put on the inside. If you don't want it flat, this one is just flat to the page. It doesn't have any gussets. But this one has some gussets so that more can be placed on the inside of the pocket. And to do that, just take a piece of 6x6 six six cardstock. I'll turn it over so that you can maybe actually see it. <laughs> this side just kind of blends in with, you know, I'll turn it over here on this side. Because it's 6x6, six six, I'm going to go in on this side one inch and score it down and then go to the right one tick mark, which is an eighth inch, and score that down. And then I'll do the same thing on this side, go into one inch, and then go to the left on the outside of that, one tick mark. Then decide how tall you want your pocket, and I want mine to be, oh, I don't know, four inches is fine. So I will score at the four inch mark and then I will go to the outside one tick mark to the right and score that 
I shall take Moss as alls. On the furthest inside score marks, I will cut this whole corner away. So when I get done cutting, there will be no score marks seen here or here. And we cut all of those, get cut away. And then what I usually like to do is I'll cut these little flaps that get folded in. I cut a little triangle off of them so that they fold against each other a little bit easier and so that the corners aren't fighting each other for room. And then I fold on those score lines. Simply, simply. Just like that. Take a wee bit of glue and just put some glue where that is going to hit those little side flaps that get folded in. And once that glue is secure, then you can add this pocket to the inside of the book anywhere that you would like. If you want to take a hole punch, and make a little thumb hole so that it's easier to get items in and out of the pocket, then there you go. Pretty easy. A similar idea to this would be adding a library envelope with a library card. Either make one out of paper. I know there are several stores on Etsy like mine that have library card kits to where you can just print them out and then you have a library card and a pocket that you can put together and add to the back of your book, especially if you lend out books. <laughs> so let's say it's not a notebook, because why would you lend out a notebook, right? But let's say it's just a regular book book that maybe people want to read. You can have them sign it so you remember where, remember who took it. You, you keep this part. You keep this part with their name so that you know where it went, especially if you have a large library and people are borrowing books from you. Put some library cards in there. I don't know. It's quaint anyway, right? Okay, another thing you can add to any book, Ex Libris label. Of course, this is to sign so that people know whose book this belongs to. It can be put in the back or the front, wherever you'd like it, inside the fly leaf, wherever you would like. But then this way, it just shows ownership of the book. I love Ex Libris labels. I don't think they get used often enough. So make yourself up some labels and stake your claim to your favorite books. <laughs> well, there is a list of some of my favorite additions that I like to add to books to give them special touches or to make them more useful. I hope some of these ideas help you as well. Maybe something that you would like to put in your books whether you buy them or you make them. It was a lot of fun hanging out with you today. Thanks for joining me, and I will see you really, really soon in the next video. Bye, guys.